Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial bite for Oxygen Not Included which is all about how to include the oxygen. I will cover early oxygen production, self-powered oxygen machines or SPOMs and how to manage carbon dioxide. Obviously you'll need oxygen to keep dupes alive and normal dupes need 100 grams a second or 60 kilos per cycle to breathe. Dupes with a diver's lung trait consume 25% less so 75 grams per second and the deep diver's lungs buff which can be gained from neural vacillators, reduces consumption by 50% to 50 grams per second. These two traits do stack. The mouth breather trait makes dupes consume double the amount of oxygen, and so I would highly recommend avoiding any of these dupes. The very first source of oxygen you'll get as you start the game is oxalite found near the printing pod. This will off-gas into oxygen and gives you enough time to set up your early base and oxygen production. Note that it's better to not dig this out as digging natural tiles loses half the mass and you will lose half of the oxygen this can provide. There are three types of starting biome which depends on your planetoid or cluster choice and I'll talk through these in turn as each has different methods of oxygen production you'll need to use. In temperate starts oxygen is made very simply using oxygen diffusers which consume algae that can be dug up nearby. Each diffuser can theoretically support five tubes so a couple of these spread out around the base will be more than enough to get your colony through to the mid game. Boris starts are more difficult and oxygen production here is through the oxyphone plants which you can find around the forest biome. These can be used as wild plants or domesticated but note that the domesticated oxyphone is four times more powerful but does require water and dirt. Early on you'll need dupes to supply this from a pitcher pump but you can use hydroponic tiles to automate this once researched. The plants also need to consume carbon dioxide to make oxygen like real life plants and this is the only plant to do so in the game. A domestic oxyphone makes around 31 grams per second of oxygen and consumes around 0.6 grams per second of carbon dioxide. You'll need 3.2 plants per dupe or 16 plants for 5 dupes. For wild planting you'd need 13 plants per dupe. In the spaced out DLC the swamp biome has polluted mud which is used in the sublimation station to produce polluted oxygen that dupes can breathe. This is certainly less convenient than the other two starts as whilst breathing polluted oxygen will keep dupes alive it will also give them the yucky lungs debuff. Dupes will consume 30% more oxygen and cough periodically when affected by this. Once researched you can use deodorizers to convert the polluted oxygen to oxygen which avoids this issue. Each sublimation station can support 6 dupes when converted to oxygen or 5 when not due to the yucky lungs consumption increase. For all the starts these early methods are inherently limited as they rely on limited resources, algae or polluted mud, or a limited number of oxyphone seeds which cannot be reproduced. I should mention here the rust deoxidizer but this also requires rust which is a limited mineable resource. Therefore all long-term oxygen production has to be done with electrolyzers which only consume water that can be renewably captured from water or steam geysers. I'll explain how to do this in another tutorial bite. Electrolyzers take one kilogram per second of water and split this into an 8 to 1 ratio of oxygen to hydrogen. Of course the oxygen is used for your dupes and the hydrogen can be consumed in hydrogen generators which offset the power cost. I'll run through the basic setups before getting on to the SPOM. So the first implementation you might try is to use two gas pumps and a filter in an enclosed room. By splitting the oxygen and hydrogen in the filter you can ensure the outputs are correct. One of the disadvantages to this is that the pumping efficiency is reduced when packets of oxygen and hydrogen can't merge in the pipes. But the main issue is that the gas filter requires significant amounts of power which makes this system a net consumer. We need a way to remove the filter building. In order to do this we can take advantage of the inherent gas densities which means the hydrogen will float above the oxygen. Placing the electrolyzers on airflow or mesh tiles allows the oxygen to fall down where we can place gas pumps below to output this into the base. At the top there's a gas pump connected to two element sensors which means the pump will only run when hydrogen is detected on both. By removing the gas filter building this system is now power positive and it is a basic type of SPOM or self powered oxygen machine. But we can make this better still by using a one tile high gap filled with hydrogen as I'll demonstrate in the next build. And moving straight on to that this is the final form of the SPOM using this trick. More experienced players may recognize these two builds as the Half Rodriguez and Full Rodriguez which are named after Nicolas Rodriguez who created them. He then shared the designs with Francis John who popularized them so it's only right I give credit to both here. 
I should also mention that there are other designs, for example, which use small liquid packets to prevent overpressuring. The reason that I use these is that they're easy, simple and reliable, and if you need more oxygen production, you can just build more. I'll focus here on the half Rodriguez and touch on scaling this up to the full Rodriguez. As I was saying, this design uses a one tile high gap of hydrogen, which acts as a mechanical filter. Because hydrogen is lighter than oxygen, it will never get displaced in this gap, ensuring only hydrogen comes through the top pump and oxygen through the bottom pumps. The implementation is otherwise very straightforward. Notice that the doors are simply for making access easier, but you could use tiles instead. Looking at the ventilation overlay, this design has one pump for hydrogen and four for oxygen. The oxygen pumps should be connected in pairs as they each produce 500 grams per second and the gas pipe capacity is one kilogram per second. I would advise not to run the gas pipes over one of the pump outputs, but instead join the pipes together as shown. In practice, the half Rodriguez produces around 1.5 kilograms per second of oxygen, enough for 15 normal tubes. Oxygen lines can be run into your base area and I like to distribute them using normal gas vents in each room. Use overpressure at 2 kilograms per tile, which is a perfect pressure for your dupes and so requires no further control. Another benefit is that suit docks are easily fed from these lines. For the hydrogen output pipe, I send this to infinite storage in the late game. You can check out the tutorial pipe for infinite storage linked in the card. Before this is set up, you can consume the hydrogen locally with two hydrogen generators. And I typically just run the gas pipe straight into these. You could include a gas reservoir to store a fuel reserve if you wanted to. Power is an interesting topic and I like to use heavy watt wire and connect it directly into this bomb and then keep this on the high power side of my grid. That's why my implementation of this uses a heavy watt joint plate in the centre. For the half Rodriguez here, you can run everything from a single conductive wire, but it's really up to you. One of the benefits of this design is the fact that it's power positive. I've run some tests and found that it produces around 450 watts if all the oxygen is consumed. The liquid plumbing is very simple and the electrolyzers only need a water input. Beware getting the wrong liquid into these pipes though, as it will damage the electrolyzers and spill liquid on the floor. If this happens, you'll need to send in dupes to repair and mop up, and your oxygen supply will be disrupted. The last overlay to explain is automation, and here all you need to do is control the pumps with Atmos sensors. I've seen many different values work for these, but in my games I use 450 grams on the hydrogen side and 750 grams on the oxygen side. When locally consuming the hydrogen, I of course use a smart battery to control the generators. If you aren't familiar with how to use smart batteries or the idea of a low and high power grid, then I will have a tutorial by on power management. A neat trick that I use to prevent the hydrogen backing up is to use an OR gate with the battery input and the hydrogen atmo sensor with a filter gate. I set this filter gate to the default 5 seconds, which means if hydrogen is collecting in the system, the generators will turn on and burn this off. This prevents any hydrogen ever getting into the oxygen lines, which can damage suit docks. Having covered all of the main points of the half Rodriguez, the full Rodriguez is very similar. It has four electrolyzers and six oxygen pumps, but still one hydrogen gas pump. The oxygen gas pipes has three output lines, and the design generates a little under three kilograms per second. Note if you're consuming the hydrogen locally, then you'll need four hydrogen generators. The water pipes remain very similar, and for power, heavy watt wires still remain a good choice. And if you use lower power wires, then the total power draw is more than one conductive wire, so you will need to split this into at least two low power circuits. The average power output from this design is a bit over 900 watts. Automation is basically the same. For both of these designs, heat is an issue, and temperatures will stabilise at around 80 degrees, so I'd highly recommend using gold amalgam for all the machinery so it doesn't overheat. If you want to know more about overheating, check out my tutorial bite linked in the card. You will need active cooling to keep the base cool, and there are many ways to do this, the important point is that it is much easier to cool a SPOM's oxygen output than the water input. My personal approach is to simply cool the base area, but you can cool the oxygen before it reaches the vents as well. I will also explain cooling in a separate tutorial pipe. The last bit to explain is how to build and initialise this system, and the great thing is that it's really easy. My first tip is to leave two gaps, one in each floor, for tubes to access when building, and then close it once completed. Here I filled a full Rodriguez with polluted oxygen to demonstrate how to start this up, even with the wrong gas in. Quite simply, all you have to do is turn it on, but you will need a little bit of power initially to start the system up. 
These gases will get into your base, but only in small quantities, and the hydrogen generators will take a little damage, and with a quick repair, this will now run indefinitely. The point I'm making is that you don't need to spend ages clearing out existing gases, but do make sure to clear out any off-gassing debris, such as polluted dirt, slime or bleach stone. By letting this run for a while, as you can see the hydrogen has formed its one tile layer and this will now be completely stable. I'm showing on screen now a one take visual reference for each design if you want to implement this in your own games, starting with the half Rodriguez and the full Rodriguez. In the last section of this tutorial bite, I'll explain how to deal with the carbon dioxide that tubes produce as they breathe out. The first thing to note is that carbon dioxide is the heaviest gas and it will sink to the bottom of an open space. Therefore, by far the easiest way to deal with it early on is to dig a big pit under your living area to collect it. You can use a carbon dioxide skimmer to delete all of the carbon dioxide if it starts to rise, but it's far more common for this to happen due to a lack of oxygen rather than having too much carbon dioxide. This approach will last well into the mid-game, and usually by the time carbon dioxide is becoming a problem, you should have the tools and space to deal with it. If you have explored the map, and started clearing out the surrounding biomes by strip mining, you'll have the space to simply let the carbon dioxide fall into the large area outside of your living space. It can also be vented to space if you run a gas line to the top of the map, as shown. When making an enclosed space, this is even easier to manage, as you can use a sump or funnel design that channels the carbon dioxide towards a central point to be pumped out. The automation for this uses two gas element sensors set to oxygen, then a NOT gate to work out when they're not oxygen, and both run through an AND gate to the pump. I'll also mention slicksters which consume carbon dioxide, but I wouldn't recommend these as a practical carbon dioxide deletion method for dupes. Each slickster will consume enough carbon dioxide for 17 dupes, so you need to have a large population before this becomes viable, and there are just easier ways as I've explained. The other building that I always avoid is the algae terrarium, as these are horribly weak and require too much dupe labour and make polluted water. To clarify the numbers, to match an oxygen diffuser you would need 12 of these, and to delete the carbon dioxide of only one dupe you'd need 6. So that's all for this tutorial bite about the oxygen in Oxygen Not Included. I hope you found this useful, and thanks for watching.